Hi, this is Mrs. Robel. This is Chapter 7, Ionic Compounds and Metals, Part 1. In this video, we're going to look at what is a chemical bond and how do we form positive or negative ions. Then we're going to look at ion formation and electron configuration. And then lastly, we're going to look at type 1 ionic compounds. Okay, so what is a chemical bond? A chemical bond is a force or an attraction that holds two atoms together. And typically with a chemical bond, you have the charge of the positive nucleus that is attracted to the negative electrons from the other atom. Okay, now before we start talking about a chemical bond, we want to look at what is an ion. And the first type is cation. So notice that we have on the right hand side of the slide here, we have um, a neutral sodium atom. And this neutral sodium atom has one valence electron. Now here it's forming a sodium ion and it actually loses an electron. So it starts off, the neutral atom has an electron configuration of uh, noble gas neon with a 3s1 valence electron. And when it loses this outer electron, it becomes just neon. Now let's talk about naming cations. So when you name cations, you just use the element's name and then you add ion to it. So for instance, sodium, sodium becomes sodium ion. And it has that plus sign at the top there to show you that it lost an electron. Now if magnesium becomes an ion, it has to lose two valence electrons. And as a result of it, at the top of its element symbol, you have to add the designation of 2 plus. If you have aluminum, aluminum has three valence electrons, so it loses all three valence electrons and it becomes a positive 3. Okay, why would a metal like aluminum lose its valence electrons? Well, the reason why is it actually becomes a noble gas. It, it's not, aluminum doesn't necessarily become that noble gas, but it becomes noble gas-like. So whatever its valence electrons are here, when it loses those three electrons, it becomes like the noble gas that is in that row. I'm sorry, in the row above it. Okay. Let's talk about anions. So anions, they're negatively charged. And here we have chlorine. So chlorine, it wants to gain electrons. So it's going to add another electron to its outer energy level. It starts off as an electron configuration of neon with 3s2, 3p5 valence electrons. Now when it gains that electron, it becomes like argon. And if you look in the periodic table that is right adjacent to the chlorine element, so it becomes like argon with that extra electron. And please note it has a negative charge next to the um, element symbol. Okay, so naming anions is a little bit different. You want to name the element and this is where it gets a little confusing for students. You want to take off the ending. It's some kind of suffix like chlor chlorine, I-N-E. If you remove the I-N-E, it becomes I-D-E. And then you add ion to it. So chlorine becomes chloride. And it's written with a Cl minus charge. If it was oxygen, oxygen becomes oxide and then you add a two minus charge to the element symbol. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take cations and anions and we're gonna add them together to form binary compounds. So binary means two. And there's actually two types of binary compounds. Um, we're gonna just talk about type one in this video. But typically, binary compounds have a metal with a non-metal, and we call these ionic compounds. We're going to talk about type 3 when we get to the next chapter. That is where you have two or more nonmetals, and these are considered molecular compounds, and we'll learn about why we call them molecular. 
Okay, so type 1 binary, um, typically you have a cation, and it could be an alkaline metal or an alkaline earth metal, or it could even be um, something like uh, aluminum, gallium, indium. Now, um, what you need to do is you need to um, name the cation first, and then you're going to always add the anion after that. So like I said, you want to name the cation first, and then after you name the cation, then you can add the anion's name. So for both of them, we showed examples where you were just naming the ion. You're going to get rid of the word ion. It, it's not part of the overall compound name. Okay, so here we go. Um, first example is NAI. Na is the cation, I is the anion, and it becomes sodium iodide. Here we have MgBr2. Mg is the cation, Br is the anion, and it becomes magnesium bromide. So notice we don't put ion in the name at all. We have AlCl3, and it becomes aluminum chloride. CAS. So Ca is the cation, S is the anion, and that becomes calcium sulfide. And then K2O. K is the cation, O is the anion, and it becomes potassium oxide. So notice the anion is the only element that changes its name. Okay, so in summary, chemical bonds are forces that hold two or more atoms together. And Typically, when we get an ion, we're forming an ion because it's more stable. It essentially forms a complete octet, or it becomes noble gas-like. Please note that ions are formed either by the gain or loss of valence electrons. And please remember that when you are forming an ion, you must keep the number of protons the same. So the only thing that changes is the number of valence electrons. And then lastly, type 1 binary compounds, you want to name the cation first and then use the anion name. And remember, the anion is where you're removing the ending and just changing it to IDE.